Hello, this tutorial is going to cover the basics of CorelDRAW and some of the tools in your CorelDRAW toolbox. What is CorelDRAW? CorelDRAW is a vector-based art program where you can create and edit vector graphics. In order to get the most use out of CorelDRAW, I would highly encourage you to use a mouse. There are many options that you can easily access with the right mouse button. Plus, I am often using keyboard shortcuts at the same time as using the mouse. This will become much more difficult if you are trying to use the touchpad on your laptop in lieu of a mouse. So let's take a look at our Corel workspace. I want to point your attention to this bar right here, which is called the property bar. This is a wonderful tool that will react to whatever I am currently selected on in my file. You can see right now I am currently selected on nothing. So right now I'm getting information about my document page settings. You can see that my document is a letter size, uh, eight and a half inches by 11. It's an upright profile. Um, and my ruler here is set for inches. If I select on an object, you will see that my property bar will change to give me information about the object on which I am selected. You can see that when I click on this yellow square, I can see how big it is. It's 2.6 by 2 inches. I can see where on my page it is on the X and Y radius. I even have some specific settings that are specific only to rectangles, like my corner settings over here. If I select the Action Illustrated, you can now see that I'm getting options for text, like font, size, justification. If I select the rose image, which is several objects grouped together, so I get options to ungroup it. So be very mindful of this property bar. It gives you so much information and may show you options that you didn't previously realize were possible. The next part of CorelDRAW I want to show you is the object manager. You can access the object manager by going to object and then selecting object manager. If you are in an older version of Corel, I believe you can find the object manager under window and going to uh, dockers. There we go, object manager. It's going to open up on my right hand side of my page. This gives you a list of everything that's going on in your page. You can see my rectangle right here, the rose image uh, that I'm currently selected on. If I click on this little plus sign, I can see the three shapes that make up my rows. There's a black curve, a red curve, and a green curve. I can see right here is my uh, brush script text that I have, and so on. The last part of your Corel screen that I want to cover right now is down in the bottom right corner. This shows me the fill and outline properties of whatever I am currently selected on. So let's go ahead and click on my rectangle, my yellow rectangle again. You can see that it's filled with 100% Pantone yellow CV, and it has an outline of 100% Pantone 293 CV. When I select on my rows, I can see that I am currently selected on objects that have color, but I'm selected on object with different colors, more than one color. That's what this red slash means. Uh, I can see that they are Pantone colors because of this tiny little white square in the bottom left corner. Uh, and I can also see that it doesn't have any outlines on any of the objects. If I click on the text here, I can see that I have a CMYK black and there's no outline on it. So these are different areas of your workspace that you should be referencing when using CorelDRAW. These areas will constantly be giving you information about what's going on in your design. At the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that CorelDRAW is a vector program. So let's go over what that means. A vector image is a design that's made up of lines and points. It's the kind of file that a vinyl cutter can read. You can use CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, and FlexiSign for vector graphics. Uh, the other main kind of image is a raster image also called a bitmap image. A raster or bitmap image is basically a photograph. 
it's a square that's filled with pixels of color to make the image you would use Corel Photo Paint or Adobe Photoshop to work with raster images. So let's take a look at these two piggy banks I have ignored until now. This little piggy is a vector file and this little piggy is a bitmap image. How can I tell? There are many ways. The first is to change the way that we actually view the images. I can change my view to wireframe you're going to see how different these two images actually are from one another. The wireframe view basically is how your vinyl cutter would see these files. You can see that the vector graphic is made up of lines. This is exactly where the blade of your vinyl cutter would be cutting your material. And you can see that the bitmap is a square that's just filled with pixels of color. Uh, let's go back to enhanced view, which is the normal view that you would be using inside of Corel. Another way to find out uh, what kind of image it is, whether a vector or bitmap, is by using the information in our property bar, object manager, and uh, down here with our fill and outline information. If I select on my vector pig, you can see that the property bar is giving me um, an option to ungroup them which is happening because it's a, a vector file of vector grouped objects. In the object manager, I can see that the pig here is a group of six objects. And if I expand it out, I can see that my pig is a different group of colored objects. And down in the corner, I can see that I am selected on objects with different Pantone colors and none of the objects have an outline. However, if I click on my bitmap pig, I get very different information. My property bar is now giving me bitmap options. My object manager shows it. It actually has it listed as a bitmap. And down in the corner, you can see that there's absolutely no fill or outline information applied to this image. So why do I want vector over bitmap? The vector image is completely editable in CorelDRAW, and we are quite limited in CorelDRAW with the bitmap. The vector here, I can ungroup it, and I can change the color of the files, or a color of the different objects. In CorelDRAW, I cannot edit uh, this vector pig as far as color goes. Also with the vector, I can actually size this guy up to the size of a billboard, and he will never distort. However, if I try to size my pig up, he will eventually become uh, pixelated and soft around the edges. One last thing to cover uh, is the undo option. The shortcut, your undo, is Control Z, on, as in zebra on your keyboard. Anything I do in Corel Draw that I don't like or was a mistake, I can simply hit Control Z and go back a step. Uh, you can use it up to 20 times. If you go back too far, you can redo your undo just to edit, and there's a re it tells me right there, redo fill, if I, didn't ask, if I didn't really want to undo that yellow fill. So while you're exploring Corel, you really don't need to be precious with your design. If you don't know what an option will do, just do it, and if it's not what you were trying to do, then simply undo it. Uh, and so that is the undo option inside of Corel. Very valuable. This was an overview of Corel Draw. The next tutorial, we're going to dive deeper into our tools in our toolbar on the left hand side.